in the previous lecture i derived the expression in case of compton scattering for the probability of an initial photon with momentum ki going to a final photon with momentum kf and now to convert that probability to a cross section we have to sum over all the degrees of freedom which are not actually observed in the experiment so we have to integrate over the electron degrees of freedom and uh, see what uh, structure comes out and then uh, evaluate the relevant gamma matrix stresses which is a significant amount of algebra in this particular case but it can be carried out um, using several tricks so the expression for um, the probability of scattering involved various delta functions and the values of the flux which we have to now calculate the flux actually is easy to see in this particular example because uh, for photons scattering from stationary electrons the flux is nothing but the speed of the photon which is c or 1 in the units which uh, we are working on so the flux part doesn't um, give any more complications and uh, when expressions which i have obtained i have already cancelled off uh, all factors of v which is the volume for box normalization i have not bothered to write them down because they already cancel out as they should in any physical um, observable quantity so we just have to tackle this particular delta functions so what we do is well integrating out all on observed electron degrees of freedom we get rid of the space part of the delta functions rather easily by removing d cube p of integrals and then the energy part will remain as a delta function but that has to be removed by integrating over d cube kf or rather the radial part of the d cube kf integral the angular part survives and that converts this cross section to a differential cross section in terms of scattering angle so let me just write the first step which is uh, just integrating over the electron degrees of freedom so it becomes d sigma fi um, overall factors of m square i can put in the numerator all the various 2 pi and 2 etc simplify to 16 pi square the energy and uh, momentum becomes m times omega i and for the final state it is ef omega f so these are the normalization factor 
then there is a delta function of the energy which remains from the four dimensional delta function and then the integration over k f can be separated into radial and angular part. All the 2 pi cubes etcetera have been already taken care of and finally, there is the matrix element square. So, this is a expression and which we now have to integrate over the radial part of k f and in doing that uh, we need to take into account that in the delta function not only omega f is equal to k f which is one dependence, but E f also depends on k f due to the energy momentum conservation. So, we need to calculate we must find a the derivative of d e f with respect to a f, but this derivative must be calculated using only the imposed condition so far, which is the conservation of momentum and only after we have integrated over the energy delta function, you can put the energy conservation back into the equation. So, now let us just do that. So, what is this quantity? It can be written as derivative of this huge square root coming from the momentum conservation and then one can trivially expand this and uh, write out the full expression. The well, you can expand it. So, let us see it is a square root of k f square minus plus k i square minus 2 k f k i cos theta, which is a dot product of k f and k i and plus m square d k f. And so, now the derivative is calculated in a rather straightforward manner. The square root goes 1 power less, so it becomes in the denominator and that value is nothing but E f. So, taking care of all the factors of half etcetera, uh, we have an E f in the denominator and the derivative of the numerator inside the square root now gives k f minus k i cos theta. So, this is a uh, 
simple enough expression, but we have to now simplify it more because we do not know cos theta right away. So, we can rewrite this object as k f minus k i plus k i into 1 minus cosine theta divided by E f. And now, since the derivative is already calculated, we can use the various tricks of uh, energy conservation and uh, simplify this expression further. So, what does energy conservation tell you and uh, writing in the four vector notation, it can be expressed in uh, various different ways, but one way of writing the conservation law is P f minus P i, which is the momentum gained by electron must be the momentum lost by the photon. And so, this identity has to hold and what this uh, implies now is, uh, well we work it out explicitly P f square uh, is m squares, P i square is also m square. So, there is 2 m square P f dotted with P i, since P i is just the rest mass energy is 2 m E f. Right hand side gives similar expression, but k square is 0. So, it is just minus 2 k i dotted with k f and writing explicitly in terms of energy and momentum part, the dot product of energy just gives k i k f in terms of magnitude and the dot product of space will just give the same thing, but with an angle in between. So, that is the result and uh, one can re-express uh, this in several different ways. One way of uh, writing it is uh, write everything in terms of the photon variables. So, the right hand side is rather simple, even the 2 can be removed. So, leave it out. And on the left hand side, you have m as a common factor and then E f minus m, but E f minus m is the same as k i minus k f by energy conservation of just the 0th component. And so, this is an identity which uh, follows and which now can be used to simplify the expression for the derivative which we wanted. And so, let us see there are several other consequences as well. So, let us see what all things is imply. One thing is uh, k i has to be greater than k f. Then there is a second formula which is often related in the form which Compton wrote down by dividing this equation throughout by k i k f. And this is a uh, Compton's formula for changing photon wavelength and uh, the third thing which we need is to calculate this d e f by d k f for which we must substitute all these cosine thetas and uh, get rid of various uh, unwanted quantities. So, uh, let us just do that. So, d e f k 
of my ki will just let it write down so it's plus ki into 1 minus cosine theta is this object divided by k f Okay. And this uh, well can be simplified, you need a factor of 1. So, this is m minus E f. I have to subtract out basically 1 which I do not want plus m by k f. And so this is M by EF is a common factor here, then the various terms are one plus one by KF KI minus KF that is one part and then there is minus 1. So, the net result is well this k f numerator denominator also cancels with the 1 on the other side and so the total result at the end of this whole jugglery is uh, m k i by e f k f minus 1. And this is in a form which can be now used to integrate over the delta functions of energy, which uh, was written earlier and that delta function basically produces uh, the factor of 1 plus d k f by d f in the denominator and that is where the whole simplification occurs. So, integration over d k f gives 1 divided by magnitude of 1 plus del e f And finally, when you put in all these uh, various factors together, many things simplify. is 1 over 16 pi square, which is fine. Then this E f k f parts essentially all cancels out m also will cancels out to some degree and the net result is with omega f and k f being equal etcetera.
in a rather simple looking form where the differential cross section is just proportional to k f by k i whole square multiplied by the matrix element. And now, our job is to calculate this uh, matrix element and we will use the same tricks as we used in the case of Coulomb scattering, they have to be written in terms of u bar and u and then rewrite the u bar u factors by cyclic arrangement into the form where they become all traces and uh, that expression. So, depends on the initial and final states, but if we use the same ideas that the electrons are unpolarized, then the only projection operators which appear are the p less plus m for the electrons after summing over the spin states. So, the result looks like d sigma by d omega. We had written out T f i earlier, so I am just going to count those things explicitly. This uh, extra factor of half comes in because we are averaging over the initial uh, spin, but summing over the final spin. So, there is a half in there and now there is a big trace and where all the various projectors appear. And here is the explicit expression where there were two terms. in the scattering corresponding to crossing symmetry of the two diagrams. Then another projector and then the final factor which has the capital gamma bar which means all these things written in an opposite order as far as the all the slash combinations are concerned. So, this is a expression which requires now all the tricks of the gamma matrix algebra calculations of traces which we had summarized before and uh, there are. So, the trace involves products of up to 8 gamma matrices. We must simplify those products to numbers. So, it can be done uh, in a rather brute force, but one can work out the various terms individually in particular there are um, four terms 
which arises from this two diagrams multiplied by its conjugate combination and uh, there is a certain symmetry the crossing symmetry between these objects and it helps to look at these four terms one by one it simplifies the calculation somewhat and I will give a brief derivation of what happens and the individual steps can be filled in uh, in a rather straightforward manner. So, look at for the four terms individually. And uh, what helps is using all the various uh, combinations which kind of vanish. So, what we will use is uh, the generic trick that use a slash b slash by anti commuting one through the other to give 2 a dot b minus b slash a slash. So, these various factors can be commuted together and to take them into a form where the last combination kind of vanishes extensively and in particular many dot products vanish obviously the some of them are epsilon dot k for a photon which is always 0 the photon is a transverse polarized object then k slash k slash is equal to k square is also 0 for the photons because they are on shell on top of that the initial momentum is uh, such that it is a rest electron state. So, the transverse photon either of them initial or the final also happens to be 0 and all those objects uh, have to be used in this commuting this operators where this a dot b will land up to be some of these combinations and they can be immediately eliminated and there is no simple combination to involve p f. So, p f is written at some stage or the other in terms of p i k i and k f and that is true by conservation law of the four momentum. So, then the dot products of p i k i and k f with the other objects have simpler forms. So, p f does not have a simple form we will eliminate um, them then this particular problem. So, let us look at the first term uh, it has a form of trace p f plus m slash then this various factors of epsilons then the second and then the second factor and that closes the trace. 
So, now we want to simplify this object. First, we see that the mass term has this k slash on either side, mass is just a number and k slash is k slash square is 0. So, the mass part does not contribute. So, this p i slash plus m is just equivalent to only p i slash and once that mass is gone, the other mass also disappears because that now corresponds to a product of 7 gamma matrices which happens to be 0, the numbers have to be E 1 to give a non 0 trace. So, the first uh, object is just to get rid of all the mass to write this as a simpler form. where we have used that mass terms vanish because k i square is 0. So, now we have a explicit product of 8 matrices. Again the thing to do is use this case slash equal to cases square equal to 0 to, to anti commute through one of them to get the result in the correct form and uh, that requires anti commuting k through p which gives only the dot product between the two. So, we can rewrite this object is a uh, 2 k i dotted with p i and then the trace of p f slash epsilon f slash epsilon i slash. This has gone through already and then there are whatever is remaining 1 k i slash is still there epsilon i slash epsilon f slash. So, now we have a product of 6 gamma matrices. Again we can reduce it further by noting that this epsilon and k uh, together uh, they have a 0 dot product. So, we can write it in the opposite order. So, it becomes minus k i slash epsilon i slash, but then there are two epsilon i slash uh, together. So, that also gives an identity which I should have mentioned earlier that epsilon dotted with epsilon is equal to minus 1 that also can be used. So, one anti commutation and the minus 1 to epsilon i slash disappear and the result then is now k i dotted with p i trace p f slash epsilon f slash k i slash epsilon f slash. So, now we are down to 4 gamma matrices and now this can be just explicitly written down in terms of the cyclic rules which we have used. So, the result is a 4 comes from the trace and then there are various combinations which appear in this uh, product. So, the first thing is a uh, the dot product of epsilon with k. So, let us just write down it is a p f 
dotted with epsilon f and then the other two produce their own dot product that is k i dotted with epsilon f. So, this is one term. The same term occurs twice because when the p f is dotted with the last one, it gives the same result. So, this object has actually an overall factor of 2 and then there is a dot product of p with k and the epsilon with epsilon and there is a minus sign the with p f dot with k i and then epsilon dot epsilon is equal to minus 1. So, that can be just included in a straightforward fashion and then this is a final form which can be uh, written maybe in a little bit different form again using a energy conservation we will we'll get rid of all the factors of p f. So, k i dotted with p i is outside and then when you substitute p f as m plus no sorry p i plus k i minus k f in both this uh, places things simplify because epsilon f dotted with k f is already 0 cannot change uh, much about that k i dot e f is appearing here. So, it gives 2 times the contribution. So, 2 times k i dot e f square and then there is a third term which is p i dotted with epsilon f that also happens to be 0 because p i is just the rest mass. So, first term can be rewritten as this same trick for the second term here again. The energy momentum conservation implies that k i minus p f equals k f minus p i in a rearranged form. Squaring this expression k square equal to 0 and p square equal to m square are eliminated from the two sides of the equation giving p f dot k i equal to p i dot k f. This is the final form of this first term which is useful all specified in terms of the observable constant p f is the one which is not observed and we have to get rid of it from all the expression. So, this is the term. Now, the last term in this product of four objects is related to this by crossing symmetry so the substitutions in that particular case was epsilon i k i got interchanged with epsilon f and minus k f and so the contribution uh, is now easily written down 
it is 8 times kf dotted with pi. Uh, there is a negative sign, but we are going to absorb it inside uh, this combination. So, it is minus 2 kf dot epsilon i square and here the sign remains plus and it is p i dotted with k i. So, this is a explicit evaluation of two of the terms. The two other cross terms are equal by crossing symmetry there there are the sign changes do not do anything explicitly and so we only have to evaluate one of them. and each then gives the contribution which can be written as trace p f slash plus m epsilon f epsilon i k i then p i slash plus m and down the other object k f slash epsilon f slash epsilon i slash. And here um, nothing simplifies as easily because there are no two factors of k i which will square to 0, but we just have to use the other part which is well get rid of the p f uh, and write everything in terms of p i. And that gives the combinations only in terms of And then the remaining part which happens to be k f minus k i and k f minus k i is in a good position where thing can be used to simplify together with all the epsilon, but let me just write down that thing first. So, k f minus k i together with epsilon f slash and here the mass can be dropped because that gives an odd number of gamma matrices with 0 trace, In the other part the mass still survives. So, this is the first step and now the point is to get this various objects uh, simplified in a some combination or the other. 
various uh, things can be tried uh, in terms of epsilon and k for example, this uh, contribution of epsilon i slash k i slash can be written in the opposite order with uh, k i slash epsilon i slash with a negative sign and then epsilon will have 0 product with p i slash again etcetera and uh, that procedure can be now continued till all the traces uh, basically come down and uh, I will only write down the final answer the rest of the stuff is an exercise. So, that result is and these terms still explicitly obey the crossing symmetry that can be seen by the same interchanges and uh, one just have to work them out. The important part is that the mass again drops out completely from the calculation and here it is a kind of consequence that p slash square becomes m square and then it cancels with the other quadratic term of minus m square for the trace. So, that is the summary and uh, Now, I can write down just the final expression. So, we have a much simpler result. where the overall constant is alpha square by four m square after taking into account all the factors of two m's in the denominator k f by k i square survives and the interesting part is that the remaining contribution coming from the trace is much simpler. then all the intermediate algebra would have suggested and it looks as this particular form and this uh, is a result which can also be written in a slightly different 
form using the angles explicitly. So, if one simplifies this k f square and k i square, they both uh, well happen to be 0 and uh, the expression can be rewritten in terms of just the last part. So, let me just do that and this object is k f square plus k i square minus 2 k i k f which is k f minus k i the whole thing square and that can be rewritten as cosine theta simplified to sin 4 theta by 2 in terms of the energy momentum relation which I wrote down it said k f minus k i was proportional to k f k i times 1 minus cosine theta and 1 minus cosine theta becomes 2 sin square theta by 2. So, all this jugglery is just playing around with the magnitudes and that brings the angle explicitly inside it and then the remaining part of the polarization contribution still survives. So, this particular object was calculated first by Klein and Nishina and so it is known after them it is a differential cross section calculated explicitly in terms of the property of the photons, the electron stuff does not appear explicitly anywhere except for just this factor of electron mass. Nothing else uh, is important, the charge of course, is there in parameterization of the strength of the coupling. And now, various things can be inferred uh, from this particular result in particular this object alpha by m is uh, called the classical radius of electron. It is essentially not 1 over m which will be the Compton wavelength, but a Compton wavelength uh, reduced by a factor of alpha. And here one can look at it that, that the size of the cross section is basically the characterized by this particular parameter. So, it is just a shadow produced by some object of this particular uh, radius up to the other factors which are all going to be order 1. And it, the magnitude of this uh, object is uh, roughly for me in magnitude. one get this result explicitly that this becomes essentially the cross section in the sense that the first term in this expression can be neglected in various situations. So, in the low energy limit which means k f and k i are much smaller than the mass that part can be just uh, thrown out. And in that particular case 
k f will approximately become equal to k i, it becomes a elastic uh, scattering situation or one can go to the same result of dropping the first term in case of forward scattering. Again, in that case, k f becomes equal to k i by energy conservation because 1 minus cosine theta which appeared over there is 0 and so k f equal to k i. So, this scattering becomes elastic and uh, then one has a simple form which is known as Thomson cross section and and the form for that object is d sigma by d omega is equal to alpha square by m square times epsilon f dot epsilon i whole thing square. So, not only the scattering is elastic, but the polarization also is maintained in the sense that there is no cross section for change in polarization to an orthogonal direction. And the magnitude of the Thomson cross section is one way of defining the classical radius of electron. It is exactly the size of the shadow created by this scattering in the low energy limit. Next time I will mention some further properties of this cross section in case the polarization effects are also not observed. So, we have to sum over polarizations to derive some related forms of this particular cross section.